back in time, a hundred million years ago, you'd find an unknown world, almost a different planet. Ancient fish shared a vast expanse of water in the center of Australia with gigantic creatures, strange and frightening. one of Australia's modern day dinosaurs. And in this program, we're gonna go back in time and search for some of his ancestors. Even in the age of dinosaurs, Australia's fauna was different. It had already started on a path of evolution that would lead to the unusual wildlife we see today. And sometimes things don't change much. The crocodile would have been right at home back then. And sometimes the shape of modern species mimic the form of those extinct animals. Both the similarities and the differences between Australia and the rest of the world are explained by a theory. All the world's land masses were probably once a single supercontinent called Gondwana, before they separated and drifted apart. Among the results of Australia's bizarre evolution were giant versions of the marsupials we see today. Dr. Ralph Molnar at the Queensland Museum explains why. If you looked at the Earth 250 million years ago, you would see that Australia was literally at the end of the Earth. I mean, it was at the end of the, the, the world's longest peninsula. The makeup of the fauna on a peninsula is different from what it is on the mainland of the continent. So it might be that the peninsula effect was uh, an explanation for the strange animals that lived in Australia. Now, this may explain uh, not only the unusual land animals that one finds in Australia, but also the fact you tend to get living fossils in Australia like the Queensland lungfish, which is, is virtually unchanged over the past 100 million years. This is a little platypus, one of two of the only monotremes in the world, a very unique animal. A monotreme is an egg-laying mammal, and they are very, very special. And he's got that duck bill. It's a sensory organ to locate his food. You can see on all four of his feet with those flippers, he's got spurs. I think it's very important that we take into account that any disturbance in their environment could be detrimental to the species and, gee, we'd hate to lose them. This rather unusual looking creature is actually a giant echidna. It has become extinct and it was the largest monotreme the world has ever seen. Rather a large animal and if you liken him to the modern day echidna, you can see down here, it's got a few spikes protruding through there. Of course, our modern day echidna is very, very spiky. He also possesses that long beak, which enables him to get down in amongst the foliage, into the dirt, and uses a very long tongue to scoop up ants and termites. Like the platypus, the echidna possesses formidable defensive mechanisms to deter or injure potential predators. So special handling techniques are necessary to avoid being spiked or spurred. Now, monotremes are egg-laying mammals, which also suckle their young and are a part of Australia's exclusive wildlife. After the break, more of Australia's megafauna from the time before recorded history. Wow, aren't these unbelievable? These are scaled-down versions of the dinosaurs we all recognise so well. This little bloke here, this is Tyrannosaurus rex. Oh, Bonehead. If you can imagine, they're scaled down. They grew a lot bigger than this. Excuse me, Bonehead. Another classic example there. Oh, here's Triceratops. Oh, Triceratops, very easily recognised. Three horns, grew almost the size of an elephant. And here's a life-size replica. This is more like it. This is a scale one to one. This is the size that they grew to. A truly awesome Tyrannosaurus Rex. 
massive proportions. Imagine this big jigger, boom, 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 running through the scrub chasing you down. Huge animal, massive. Dinosaurs like these by Dynamation are what we're used to seeing in dinosaur books and movies. But we're going to skip around in time and look at some of Australia's prehistoric creatures. A killer koala, or at least an honoured ancestor. The marsupial lion was the largest carnivorous marsupial to have ever existed in Australia. She was such a powerful hunter, she was actually able to bring down prey the size of a kangaroo. She was also an excellent climber, much like her modern day relative, the koala. The koalas come to us in a direct line of evolution from those fierce ancestors. It's a line of descent unbroken for maybe millions of years. Yet in just two centuries, we've created a threat to one of history's great survivors. Unless we start leaving their habitat alone, all that will be left of koalas are museum exhibits of yet another fascinating but extinct Australian animal. Koalas, a marsupial, and like the wombat who digs underneath the ground to avoid predators, the koala is strictly arboreal, and that means they are tree climbers. They don't often uh, come down to, onto the ground, and when they do, they will not traverse very far across land. They are very susceptible to diseases, and knocking down eucalypts and other trees has certainly diminished their populations. They are very fragile. Very beautiful, but very, very fragile. The short-faced kangaroo was a monstrous animal that lived a long time ago. We think he may have become extinct because as food and water supplies dwindled, he was not able to survive. In the line of evolution in the great kangaroo, the animals have actually gotten smaller over the past 10,000 to 100,000 years. And this sort of decrease in size seems to have happened in, in different ways in different sorts of animals. If we take a look at the wombat here, you've got a giant wombat sitting in its giant wombat burrow. However, this is not an ancestor of the modern wombat. Uh, instead, in, in the wombat line, it's the large ones that became extinct, the small ones that survived. In the line of the great kangaroo, they actually became smaller. The kangaroo is like many of our native fauna, smaller versions of the marsupial giants that died out thousands of lifetimes ago. This is Missy the wombat. The wombats do live underground. They burrow under fences and often cause farmers a lot of problems. This is also one of the animals that may have been subject to dwarfism. They may have actually shrunk through the years because of habitat encroachment and killing off the larger animals. They've got those very chisel-like teeth, and as you can see, it makes it very easy to chew up some rather coarse vegetation. This is Diprotodon, as she may have looked when she roamed Australia tens of thousands of years ago. Being the largest marsupial ever known, of course, she carried her young in a pouch. Scientists believe the first birds were closely related to dinosaurs. And when we see models of the huge version of the prehistoric chicken, or the giant emu, we can see the resemblance. In many animals, the similarity to their ancient ancestors is striking. Some species seem to have changed only in size and in a few details over countless centuries. Gee, have a look at the size of these giant eggs. They're not dinosaur eggs, these are actually emu eggs. One of the larger flightless birds throughout the world. Once, huge flightless birds used to wander across the whole of Australia. There's fossilised evidence of it, especially in the Riversley area. Now, these modern day birds are still roaming most of outback Australia. This is the third largest bird in the world. They've got rudimentary wings. They are the emu. That's the male sitting on the eggs. He mates with the female. She deposits the eggs, and then it's his job to hatch those little babies out, and he'll raise them up. That's his job. Very maternal.
This is the giant horned tortoise from Australia, and extinct now, of course. And they were a herbivore, a plant-eating animal, grew very, very large. Now, you can see, okay, typical tortoise structure, but have a look at this armour plating that he's got on his head. Not only have they got the armour plating on the head, but they've got that typical armour plating of your modern day tortoise. All that big shell, that carapace, going down into the tail. And if you have a look at the tail, have a look at the armour plating on that. Protecting it from large carnivores, which were preying the area. Extinct. And today's Ooh. turtles are also facing extinction. Well, this is the grisly end for this poor old turtle. He's just sitting out here cooking now. You can see how his eyes are sunken back inside his head. These turtles actually eat weed and the jellyfish. You can imagine what's getting caught up in this weed. What happens with the turtle with the jellyfish? They can't determine whether it's a jellyfish or a plastic bag, and so they eat it. Once they've eaten it, it fills up their stomach, so they're constantly thinking that they're full. And all they've got is plastic inside their belly. They can't break it down, so their digestive tract is full. They don't eat. Once they refuse to eat, it's just a slow, grisly death for them. We're losing thousands of turtles globally. We're going to lose these dinosaurs. These things here go back to the age of reptiles. They go straight back into the dinosaur era. And so do these. Australia's goanna can be a pretty ferocious lizard, but it's nothing compared with its ancestor. They look so much alike, except for size. And here's the Megalania, the largest land predator of his time. A truly magnificent and yet terrifying beast. Have a look at the size of it, the proportions of it, like a giant goanna, and possibly the only creature capable of pulling something down and killing, consuming a diprotodon, a massive marsupial, Megalania, giant goanna. We'll be back shortly with the dinosaurs of Australia's own Jurassic period. To see what Australia's marine dinosaurs were like, we're visiting the Museum of Tropical Queensland in Townsville. The creatures shown here were enormously successful in their day, and they dominated life in the water. What we've got here are some remarkable dinosaurs reconstructed from fossil evidence. Absolutely amazing. These giant creatures are the dinosaurs that roam the huge inland sea of western Queensland. This one is a plesiosaur, a massive marine reptile. And you can tell they're a marine reptile, those large fins that they've got to propel themselves through the water, and those great, huge, carnivorous teeth. Obviously a carnivore, massive animal. And this one is actually a Wollongosaurus. Looming in behind us, is another plesiosaur, and that's actually the largest plesiosaur found in this day and age, or so far. Massive big animal, almost crocodilian-like in structure, but unlike a crocodile, it's a marine reptile. And here's its skull. Look at the size of the teeth on it, massive. Jaw power like that has survived to the present day. The estuarine crocodile. Imagine how terrifying their extinct ancestors must have been. This is the ichthyosaur. Have been. Another massive marine reptile, like a fish lizard. And it's almost dolphin-like in structure. Those flippers, dorsal fin, the tail. Beautiful looking creature, totally unlike a dolphin. Have a look at the skull of this guy. Massive great set of teeth designed for eating smaller fish. What a beautiful specimen. This is the most fish-like of the dinosaurs. It evolved a shape for traveling through the water that also evolved in mammals like dolphins and whales. It seems that some designs are so perfect that even a million years of evolution can't come up with an improvement. Even the beak of the dolphin reminds us of the vicious-looking snout of an ichthyosaur. And among the fish, the same design again. The shark is virtually unchanged after millions of years. Their ancestors looked exactly the same as this. One of Australia's largest known dinosaurs was Rhodosaurus. 
a giant plant eater that lived in Queensland about 190 million years ago during the Jurassic period. Rotosaurus literally means giant lizard. And it was a sauropod, which meant a dinosaur that walked on all fours with a long neck and a very long tail. This animal would have stood four meters tall at the hip, been 17 meters from nose to tail, and would have weighed 20 tons, or about the same as four elephants. Have a look at these little blighters. They're salurosaurs, and they're one of the smallest dinosaurs. Very, very tiny, but quick, real quick. When you have a look at their leg structure, by crikey, they can run. And they've got to be able to run fast because those large, flesh-eating dinosaurs chomp, chomp, chomp. They're chasing them around, leaving footprints, and they'll eat them. By world standards, we've barely scratched the surface of Australia's fossilized past. But even so, some great discoveries have been made and recovered for study and display. This gully cutting through the line...